Hello there. This is Donna Reiners. Every day with Donna May. And it's kind of exciting because it is Christmas Eve day. Now it's exciting for me because I am going to get to be with people that I love and love me. But you know there are many people who are not going to be with anyone. And they're not going to feel loved. And they're not going to have anybody to love. I encourage you, if you know someone like that, and there's room at your table, I encourage you to make room at your table and to love on somebody. Invite them over for a, a bite to eat and a hug. A hug. <laughs> a hug can do wonders for people. Anyhow, today, what was on my heart is uh, called leprosy of the heart. This season, we are around some people, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes we are around people who are not kind, who are not loving. People walk into a room and they're like this, or they're like this, or they wanna bite your head off, or they're just not kind, or they're in a bad mood, or they don't want you to touch them, or whatever. This season, we're around people sometimes that we're not around normally. So I was reading this today, and I felt led to share. So let me hear your thoughts. Maybe you've got friends or know others who have leprosy in their hearts. They feel ugly. Did you ever think that the person that scowls at you, and the person who offends you, and the person who rubs you wrong, might just feel ugly inside? Have you ever thought maybe it may not be around about you? Inside, they feel hatred for themselves. They might suffer from self-inflicted pain or harm. They don't feel like they can touch anybody, and they don't feel like they should be touched. Your word, your thought, or your idea to love them could change their lives forever. Maybe you're waiting for somebody to touch you. Maybe you're waiting for somebody to love you so that your life can be changed forever. But did you ever think that you have the power within your grasp to change the life of someone else forever? All you can do is be faithful to love those that rub you the wrong way. Love them right where they are. You know how you want to be loved right where you are? Maybe you need to love those that you're in contact with the next few days right where they are. Maybe they will receive your love and maybe they will not. But you are only responsible to love. You are not responsible for the results of your love. Let me say that again. You're only responsible to love these that don't seem to love you back. You're not responsible for what they do with your love, whether they receive it or whether they reject it. This is why it's important that you hear inside your heart what your role is to play. You might be in a situation with someone you've loved for a really long time and that person continues to abuse you and it's because they have a leprous heart. Maybe you think that same person will one day stop hurting you as long as you continue to love him or her. Perhaps you envision this individual radically changing as you love them. But you cannot change that person and you cannot predict the moment in time when they're going to turn and be nice to you instead of unkind to you. I release you from feeling like you must put yourself in harm's way in order to heal someone else's heart or in order to heal your own. I am not convinced that you being abused as you wait for someone else's heart to change is the heart of a good father. So in the midst of me telling you this, I want to encourage you to trust God and to trust the process. Trust the process inside of you 
trust the process inside of that person. And I wanted you to be aware of something very important. Sometimes the process of loving someone takes place after you are long gone from your part in their process. Love takes time and it does work, but sometimes love works later. Listen, we are in situations these days around family members that you may not feel loved by. And honestly, you may not love them. They may get on your very last nerve. They may rub you wrong all the time. They may have scathing remarks to say about you. They may be negative towards you. There might be someone in particular that comes to the table that always has something negative or unkind or scathing to say to you directly, and you feel like they like everybody else in the room but you. But you know what? It's really not like that. It's not. There's something within you they are probably jealous of. There's something within you that they probably covet in some way, shape, or form. They might feel something for you deep inside that you have something that they don't have that they want, or they feel like you are successful in an area that they're not. Or maybe they have an expectancy, an expectation that they place on themselves, themselves. And when they get around you and they see how you are, they love how you are so much that they are blinded by the fact that they're nothing like you and they wish they were. Isn't that twisted? Isn't that twisted? Or listen, maybe you're around somebody <laughs> and deep inside you, you don't realize that you feel the same way about them that I just described that they may feel about you. I want you to pause. I want you to pause today. I want you to pause and consider Consider that this is not personal. I want you to consider <laughs> the love of God for you, the love of God for them, and the love of God inside of you for you. Take a deep breath and love yourself. When you are appropriately looking at yourself the way God sees you, with a healthy self-image, when someone else does not like you or someone else treats you in a way that is unkind or treats you in a way that you don't understand why you rub them wrong, if you know who you are, if you know whose you are, then you will not be so personally attacked by all those thoughts and all those ideas. And listen, it's not their thoughts and ideas coming in your mind, it's your own. It's your own, honey. It's your own. So stop and recalibrate this season. What's the word say? The word says to have a soft answer. That a soft answer, it dismantles. It dismantles anger. It dismantles wrath. It dismantles those that want to accuse you and want to attack you by you not engaging back with them with those ugly remarks that they feel. And listen, those ugly remarks, what comes out of their mouth is only showing how they feel about themselves. It's really truly not about you. It is not about you. It is really truly an identifying mark on the inside of them and how they feel about themselves deep within. Most people who are scathing and unkind and have self-hatred flowing out of them or have any kind of hatred flown out of them, usually it's because it's indicative of what's happened on the inside of them and how they feel about them. And just to really truly help you understand, when you engage with that, when you say, well, how are you talking to me like that? Honestly, that's just indicative of also how you feel about yourself. You can never shift your attitude to somebody else. You can never shift blame to someone else. What comes out of us is what's inside of us. Inside of us. And it's not their fault it came out of you. They just happened 
to be the one that God uses to reveal an area that you can be healed in. So look at it as a positive thing, even though it might hurt like the Dickens. <laughs> look at it as a good thing, even though you might not know right that very moment what you are going to do with that. If you will take those thoughts, take those ideas, and reconsider that they're inside of you and not inside of them, then you won't shift blame to them for your bad attitude. You won't shift blame to them because you don't feel pretty or you don't feel like you happen to be enough or you don't feel like you meet their expectations. You can understand that really what's happening is inside you, not them. And what's happening inside of them is inside of them, not you. Listen, love is always the answer. Loving yourself appropriately, not arrogantly, not I got it all together, love. No, the humble love of, wow, God, thank you that you love me. Thank you, God, that you protect me. Thank you, God, that you're in a relationship with me. And this relationship I can share with others by loving them right where they are and not expecting them to meet me where I am. Even though that is what we always want, isn't it? Can't you just meet me where I am? Can't you just meet me right where I am? Listen, I know I've said that before to people that, that have, have committed to loving me. And sometimes they're able to, and you know, sometimes they're just not. And why aren't they? Because they have their own stuff going on in their own heart. And they're not not loving me on purpose. They're not not meeting me where I am on purpose. They're meeting me as far as they can within their own woundedness and within their own pain. And so them not meeting me where I am is not about me. <laughs> it comes back to where they are in their heart and their healing journey. So I just want to encourage you today to remember when you walk into a room where there are emotions and there are ideas and there are all these thoughts flying around inside of your head about other people or what you think they're thinking about you. Usually, they're not thinking about you. Most people, honestly, are just thinking about themselves. Straight up. Most of us are just thinking about ourselves. Do I look okay? Is my hair in place? Are my shoes all right? Is, do I have wrinkles on me? You know, oh, is my dish okay that I brought in? Most people are not thinking when they walk in the room, hey, look at that one. Oh, they got bad shoes on. Oh, look at her talking about that. Really, most people aren't thinking about you. So just take a deep breath. The next few days, if you happen to be around people, you're not normally around. And those emotions, those thoughts, and those holiday cycles come around. And you dread being in that atmosphere privately. You would never say that. You would never show that. Or maybe you don't at all. But listen, there might be somebody there that comes into your environment that dreads being there every year because they feel so inadequate and they feel so unloved on the inside. So the answer is simply to love people, serve people, be kind to people, even when they're not kind to you. Because listen, there's a reason they're not being kind to you and it is not about you. And if there does happen to be something amiss between you, then it's simply an opportunity for you and that person to come into alignment and to come into unity again and come into agreement, even if that agreement is to disagree. You can agree to disagree and walk out life in peace and not pieces. In this season, when emotions are flowing like a river <laughs> full of debris, <laughs> be part of the solution and the solution is the love. It truly is. And remember, love is a person. It's not an emotion. Love is a stability. Love is unconditional. Love covers. Love covers. Love does not talk unkindly. Un doesn't um, 
how do I say this? It's not harsh, guys. It doesn't wait till that person leaves the room to say, did you see how they treated me? No. It keeps quiet and it honors that person's woundedness because it's clear that person is wounded. Everybody can see they're hurting. You know, there's no reason to point it out. Just love and cover, love and cover, love and cover. And if you have something going on and you know that you need to talk to that person, do it privately. Just love them privately. I bless you today. Until soon, this is Every Day with Donna Mae. Just wanted to encourage you with that word about leprosy in the heart. And just remember, it's not about you. And what's inside of you is not about them either. Let God heal you in this season. Whatever he reveals, he intends to heal, whether it be a miracle or whether it be a process. His heart is to heal us. And truth be known, in him, we already have the inheritance of that love. We already have the inheritance of the completed work. We already have the inheritance of wholeness and restoration and resurrection and regeneration. We have it. But sometimes we just need to appropriate it. Avoiding our junk doesn't help. Confronting it helps. Just confront it in wisdom and in kindness and with great love. Until soon, this is Donna. Bye-bye.